What's going on, engineers? Welcome to the next part of the Let's Learn Rust series. In this one, we're going to be looking at vectors and hash maps. Vectors in Rust are kind of like fixed size arrays in Rust, except with a few differences. The most important of which are vectors, you do not need to define their size at compile time, you don't need to define their items at compile time, and the vectors offer a lot more functionality over fixed size arrays. And the reason so much functionality around vectors exists is because vectors can be grown to support additional items, and you can also say, do things like remove items. For those coming from other languages, vectors are called by the same name in languages like C++ and C Sharp, they're called lists in Python, and they're called arrays in languages like JavaScript and PHP. Now for hash maps, this is something completely new that we haven't looked at in Rust yet, and hash maps are going to allow you to map keys of any type to values of any type. This means that your keys can be strings and your values can be integers, or your keys can be integers and your values can be strings, or, your, or both of them can be strings. The only requirement here is that you will need to define the types up front when you define the hash map. If you're coming from other languages, hash maps do have different names depending on the language, like C Sharp and Python call them dictionaries. Ruby calls them hash maps, along with Java also calls them hash maps. JavaScript calls them objects, and then PHP calls them arrays for whatever reason, because everything in PHP is an array. Let's jump in and look at some examples. So instead I want to store a vector of numbers. To initialize that, the syntax is going to be let something like nums equals vec colon colon new. Now you'll notice the compiler is complaining, and it's doing so because I haven't specified a type. Because vec new cannot be supplied with any values, there's no way for the compiler to know exactly what types of values you plan on storing in this vector. So because I know I'm storing numbers, I can do colon vec i32, and now the compiler is satisfied. Now, if my use case made it so I need to actually specify some values up front, I can use the vec macro instead. So I can do let nums. In this case, I'm going to skip the type vec exclamation mark bracket one, two, three, for instance. As you can see here, the compiler is satisfied, and that's because it sees that I am storing integers in this vector, so I can infer the type from that. Now, vectors can be of any type, but whichever type you pick, you have to store all the elements as that type. There is a way to store kind of elements of different types in the same vector, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. If we want to insert new values to the end of the vector, we can use the push method. So we do things like nums.push, and then say like 4. We can also do like 5 and 6 if we want to add additional numbers. At the moment, the compiler is complaining, and that's because we're trying to push elements onto an immutable vector. So all we have to do is add the mute keyword there, and then now we can push new elements onto it. Accessing specific elements of a vector can be done two ways, either by taking a slice of the vector or using the get method. So using vector slices, if I wanted to access the number three in the vector, I would take a reference of nums, and I would specify number two, which is the index for that value. Now vector slices work the same as string slices, so if I want to take from three to the end, I can just add a dot dot. If you haven't watched my string slices video, you should check that out after this video. Everything that applied there also applies here. To get that same value using the get method, it's simply nums.get2. Removing elements from a vector is also very easy. If I want to remove that number three, I can do nums.remove2. If you want to iterate over every item in a vector, you can do so with the for keyword. So in this case, if I want to print out every single number in the nums vector, I can do for num in, and then reference nums, and I can simply do a print statement, print ln, and num. We can run our program now just to make sure everything's working so far. And it is, one, two, four, five, six. Notice the three is not there, that's because we removed it. It's also possible to modify values in a vector in place. And to do this, it's still the same for in loop, except keep in mind that num is going to be a local copy. So what we have to do instead, if we wanted to say add one to every number, we'd have to first dereference num. And that's done by using a star num. And then from here, we can add one to it. You'll notice there's a compiler error, and that's because what I'm doing is I've taken a immutable reference of nums. So what I have to do is I have to add the mute keyword here, and then the compiler will be satisfied. It's worth mentioning that had the nums initialization up here not been mutable, the compiler would have also complained. But because I already added values, I've already added the mute keyword. Now remember I said there is a way to kind of store different types of values in a vector? Well, this is how this is done. The way we can do this is with an enumerated type. So in this case, we can do enum and then value and then inside here, we can specify our actual types. So say we have an int type, which is i32. Then we have a float type, which is f32. So if we want to store a number like, say, 
3 and 3.3 in the same vector, now we can. So we use the vec macro. And then in here, instead of storing just 3 and 3.3, we store value int 3. Then we store value float 3.3. And the reason this works is because these two things are technically the same type, and that's of type value. And then inside that value enum is custom type variant int and custom type variant float. The only catch here is that when you access these values or you iterate over these values, you will need to know which type variant it is. And if you don't know, you'll have to use the match keyword. So it does require some a little extra code, but you do have the benefit of having different types in the same vector. Now let's move on to hash maps. Now, before we're able to use hash maps, we need to actually include something up here, which is use standard collections hash map. Vec is loaded in by default, hash map is not. So the hash map we're going to create is one that stores the text representation of a number and then the actual number. So we'll do like one to one, but it'll be one O-N-E, a string, and then one, the number one, an integer. So to store a place for this, we have to do let numbers equals hash map new. And just like with vector, the compiler is complaining because it doesn't know what types is being used. So in this case, what we can do is we could say hash map, and then it's going to be a string literal as the key, and then an i32 as the value. Once I put this in, then the Rust compiler is satisfied. Now, before the compiler complains, I know I'm going to be adding things to the numbers hash map, so I must add the mute keyword so I can do so. Inserting and updating values is done using the insert method. So I can do numbers.insert. And then this is going to be my string literal. So I'll do one, and then the value will be one. So I'll just copy this a couple times, just to add additional ones. So two and three, and that's all set. Now, the reason I say it's insert and update is because if I want to set like three to a different number, all I have to do is just insert it again on top of that same key. So basically if the key exists, then the value is overridden. If I want to get a value at a specific key, then that's done with the method called get. So if I wanted to print the value of two, I could do print ln, and I can do it numbers.get2, and then unwrap. There's only one teeny tiny problem with this, and it's that it's not very safe. The thing about the get method is that it doesn't return the actual value, it returns a type option, which will either be sum if the key exists, or it'll be none if the key doesn't exist. The reason this is a problem is because you can't call unwrap on none. That will cause a panic and your program will terminate. So if you can guarantee that key exists, then it's okay. If you can't guarantee the key exists, then you have a couple options. The first option, this is probably the most simplest, is simply use the method called contains key. So we can do if numbers.contains key two, then do the action that you wanted to do, such as print that value. The second way is gonna be with the match keyword. So what you can do here is you can do match, and then you can say numbers.get two, and then remember, this is either going to be sum or it's going to be none. So we can check for both of these. So we can say like sum val. In this case, we can actually print the value that comes from that. And then if that doesn't work, we can check for none. And none means that the key doesn't exist. And then we can actually just print that out. Key does not exist. Whichever one you choose is up to you given your use case, but they're both safe and they're not going to panic. Now let's just run the program to make sure everything's working. So we can see that it works good. I do just want to give a quick example on what would happen if the key didn't exist. So if I put four here and I run the program, we can see that it panics. Called option unwrap on a none value, and you just can't do that. To remove an element from a hash map is the same as removing it from a vector. So we could just call numbers.remove and then specify the key that we want to remove. So we'll remove three. Now, if you want to iterate over values in a hash map, it's similar to iterating over values in a vector. You can use the for keyword. The only difference is because you have a key and a value, it's going to be a tuple key value in reference numbers. And then from here, you can print out both the key and value. So I'll do, you know, like key value, key value. So we can run our program just to make sure this works. We can see it is one, one, two, two. One important note about iterating over values in a hash map is that they are not stored in contiguous memory, which means that just because you inserted one first and then two second does not mean that they're going to be in the same order. So the first time we ran this, it was one and two, but the second time we run it, you can see now it's two and one. And if we run it a couple more times, we can see that it just keeps changing. So it's totally random as to what order it might be in. So that was the long way of saying, don't depend on the order.
And that's it for vectors and hash maps. They're probably two of the most common data structures probably in computing, and it's ones that you're going to use a ton no matter what language you're using, and that includes Rust. Fortunately, Rust makes it very easy to work with either one, and they offer a lot of functionality that's built upon these two primary data structures. If you have any questions or comments about anything you've seen in this video, go ahead and place them in the comments below. And other than that, I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.